I'm on mute. So. Hi, Vedanshi, how are you? It's so nice to see you. I think I remember you from one of our contests. Am I right? So Vedanshi had been one of the winners of our contest that we conducted on Young Environment List. And it's really nice to have children join us and follow us. But I don't know, that was the only piece left. We can't even see what I'm saying is that we also may not have to work towards it. It must have been dry now. So are you guys ready? All settled? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think I got two, three responses saying that you guys are settled. So, I welcome you all to yet another exciting session of the Young Environmentalist. Thank you so much for registering in and joining us today. Particularly, thank you for joining us on a Saturday afternoon. I'm sure you would be enjoying your holiday today. And thank you so much for taking an interest in our topic today. I'm sure you guys are aware of what the topic today for our session is about, right? It's this, but obvious, right? Hmm. So let us do some warm up. So the topic is about measuring pollutants. Um, who will tell me what a pollutant is? Are you guys aware of what pollutants are in the first place? I'm sure your environment classes in your school would have told you about it. Oh, so Laboni wants to respond. Yes. Laboni, can you please tell me which class are you in and where are you from? Yeah, Laboni. Which class are you from? And tell us what a pollutant is. I am Laboni and I am from class 5C and oh. means the means we are talking about pollution. So means pollution is a very harmful thing. Uh. On planet Earth. Okay. Okay. But I want to hear what a pollutant is. Who will tell me what a pollutant is? We all know what pollution is, but what is a pollutant? Do you guys know what a pollutant is? Raise your hands to respond and I will come to you. Okay, Adinath Anish. Yeah. Mm, Adinath, first of all, please set your camera a little so that we can see you. Yeah. Tell me which class are you in? Uh, Ma'am, I am Cambridge School. Oh, lovely. So we have a really young audience here. So Adinath, uh, do you know what a pollutant is in class? A pollutant three? is a smoke that is very, very harmful for animals, hmm? people and all of, our, all of our earth. Okay. So I think that given the fact that Adinath is in class three, I think his answer is pretty close and almost correct who else um let me ask you a second question so now that you know what a pollutant is a pollutant is something that pollutes the environment um can you tell me how a pollutant is measured do you guys have any idea how do you measure a pollutant how do you know um how polluted is your air or how polluted is your water or how polluted is the food that you are eating any idea, any guesses? 
Raise your hand quickly, quickly, quickly. Why do I see such a dull audience today? Get active. Any hands, any hands, any hands, any hands? Hmm. Okay. I think kids are being a little lazy today. So let me tell you that um, in order to help answer this question, by the way, that how a pollutant is measured, we have a very, very special guest with us today. Um, but before I introduce him to you, let me ask you a few more questions so that you guys uh, become more active. Mm, okay, tell me this. Uh, do you guys know what a calorie meter is or what a dissolved oxygen meter is or uh, what a pH meter is? Any ideas? Hmm. <laughs> Laboni once again is raising a hand, but okay, I see uh, Darsh responding with his hand. And he... hi, Darsh, how are you? I don't. Uh, I am saying that I don't know. I have not heard about these things. <laughs> <laughs> no like... problem. No problem. In fact, let me confess that even. Uh, before holding this session with you, I had no idea what a calorie meter is. And I would really uh, look forward to knowing how a pH meter works and how uh, the complicated instruments are used by uh, the experts, researchers, and scientists to measure pollution. Like we all guys know pollution is a big problem. But I know some but how of them that the climate, like the climate change, I am saying about what I am saying about the climate change, meteorologist, the scientist. Um, I didn't get you. What? I have heard about meteorologists, mm -hmm. but I have not about the measure that I'm talking about. Right? I have not heard. I'm heard. Right. First time. Okay. So you have come to the right place, Darsh. Yes, ma'am. And uh, today, in our session, we are going to learn about how pollution is actually measured. We all know that it's a big problem, but we need to know how big of a problem pollution really is. And we'll get a better idea of how big a problem it really is once we know uh, the once we are able to quantify it, once we are able to measure it, if we know that the air is very polluted or if we know that the water is very polluted, we need to know how much polluted it really is. And in order to answer this question, we need to measure pollutants, right? Now, measuring pollution is not just a child's play. It requires experts. It requires scientists and it requires specialized knowledge and skills. Therefore, we have amongst us a very special guest. In fact, we have a rock star amongst us. I would like to introduce you to Dr. Devada Kapasu. Dr. Devada is one of the most senior colleagues I have in the Center for Science and Environment. We are blessed with his presence and we are very thankful that he agreed to join us today. Dr. Basu, let me tell you, is a hardcore scientist. He is one of those people who has actually been to the laboratories and handled those complicated instruments. And he has been an expert at measuring pollutants and giving training and information about it. Let me tell you a little more about him. So Dr. Basu studied MSc chemistry from the Jadavpur University, Kolkata. Then he did his MS from the Deft University in Netherlands, and he did his PhD again from the Jadavpur University. He joined the Lund University in Sweden, and he joined the very prestigious North Carolina State University in USA. Then he conducted a lot of research in different parts of the world. He traveled to Norway, to Thailand, to South Africa for all his research activities. He has served in the Central Pollution Control Board for 36 years almost. 
He has published more than 60 research documents in Indian and foreign journals. And he retired as the scientist E and additional director of the CTCB. After the retirement, after his retirement, he joined our Center for Science and Environment in Delhi as an advisor. And he conducts research and training on industrial pollution. He specializes in developing industry specific policy documents and he develops air, water, and noise quality networks. He often visits the laboratory because he's a hardcore scientist. And now he is here with us to share his knowledge and expertise. I would request all of you to listen to his presentation carefully. He's among those scientists who you all will feel inspired by. And I'm sure that science fascinates all of you. So please pay very good attention to him. And then in the end, you will get a chance to ask him questions as well. So I request Dr. Basu to please come on board and tell us a little bit about what pollution is and how do we measure it. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, this is very nice to talk. I, I had a platform. Always I talked with the senior persons. Now, this is my first time. <laughs> of course, I taught my own son. But uh, this is the first time I am seeing the kids and coming here to listen to the lecture. And it's a very, very uh, interesting topics. And I will start slowly how measurement is important in science. See, when I was a, uh, very young, like you, I was born in a village near Bay of Bengal, and it was a very clear sky. So every dark night, that means we have a two type of night. One is a moon night, full moon night, and what is a dark night. So my father used to take me on the roof of my house. And there I saw billions and millions and millions stars are there, Milky Way. And they, these, it is so beautifully drawn and managed that nobody is clashing with nobody. Everybody is in their positions and moving. Who decide these things? How it happens? Actually, real world, we don't know. We make a hypothesis. Hypothesis, we thought about it. Then we observe it, the way Galileo observed. Galileo observed and told to telescope, the sun is in the middle and all planets are moving around. This is the Galileo observed. And he makes this hypothesis and it generates data. And the data is agree with the hypothesis. And we become a theory. We get a theory. This is the way science theory is developed. If data is not agreeing, then it is disagree. Then what happens? Don't be frustrated. 100 attempt in science, 99 is failure. Failure means some error is there in my thinking. So only data will say what is a failure and what is a success. In science, both are very important. Failure is very important in science because you know better hypothesis. So Newton makes an hypothesis, hypothesis of gravitation, that because of that gravitation, Everybody push pull. So all are traveling in one path. But in case of, then Einstein came, he told, no, there is another beautiful theory, his relativity theory is developed. Then so on and so forth. Stephen Hawkins, Roser Penrose, this big, big scientist, they came and they developed their, and it is the theory is refining and refining and we got the planetary systems. 
very strong planetary systems, the Milky Way. By the way, in this theory, then one great scientist was there, Dr. Chandrasekhar, and the, he also made a black body theory also. So he's an Indian. And there is another Indian was Bose, Satyendranath Bose. So he makes a, a photon, etc. So all this creation of Earth, creation of the universe, a lot of Indians also did a participants. So one day I, I will sure I will be sure that all some of you are also in this kind of a uh, endeavor, in this effort. Some of you will be very good scientists in future and you will do your job. If, if some of you really do, then I will be very happy if I, if I, I survive. I will see that some of is coming. Dots is listening very carefully. I assume Dots will come. Now, the question is that about the pollutants. How good is the water? This question is there. There are so many people are using the water. All of us using water for drinking. And Indians are taking bath, organized bath. That is in Kummela. So they need the quality of water, which is good for bathing. If, if, if there is a wrong water in the bathing, then there will be a epidemics. Epidemics of cholera, etc. So I, uh, whenever Kummela used to do, I was in Central Wood, I used to go there and measuring the water all the time, that what is happening in this water. Some people are doing using water for agriculture. Some people are using water for fisiculture. So they have their different type of, so this, the water may be good for agriculture, may not be good for drinking. So each and every activity needs a standard or criteria. So how you measure? These are the things, simple thing. You don't have to measure big. You go to the water, see the color. Take the water in the test tube and smell it. Then what is the temperature over the water? Generally, average Indian water. India has a water quality samples collected for 5,000 places. And we calculated that 27 degree is the good temperature, average temperature of Indian water. 27 degree centigrade. England it is 20 degree and 25 degrees US. Their average is 25. Our is a 27. Then you see the pH of the water. And how you'll measure the pH? What, what is pH? pH is that concentration of hydrogen, hydrogen ions. If hydrogen ions are more, then it is acidic. You cannot drink acid water. And this, it is more than seven, it is alkaline. You also cannot drink alkaline water. And too much alkaline water, you cannot uh, do the agriculture. So these are the things. Then we see the conductivity. Conductivity is the how much ions are there in the water. Some ions, calcium, magnesium, sodium, these are the ions, sulfate, bicarbonate, sulfate, these are the ions. These are very needed for our body because our bones are made of calcium, right? We have a lot of ions are necessary, Mang manganese, iron, these ions are necessary. These are measured by a conductivity. And I will discuss you later, one after one, I will discuss it. And the oxygen in the water. So if you want a drinking water source, minimum four milligram per liter oxygen is required. And if you want a, a taking bath, it will be around three to four milligram per liter oxygen is necessary. So these are the things, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. These six parameters is sufficient to know that water is good or not.
one is the color one is the odor taste also if you taste it taste is another one taste is that if you taste it, it and you find that it is too much salt you cannot use it sometimes <clears throat> To kill the bacteria, harmful bacteria in the water, chlorine is given. And the chlorine is very much, too much. And if you drink the water, you find the smell of the chlorine. You cannot make the ghee also out of it. So Delhi Jal Board, which is supplying water to all of you, they take care of this. How much should be the chlorine left in the drinking water uh, time? Now, this type of color we are seeing in the water. One is a very, very light green. One is no color. No color is always expected when you are drinking. Then light green is also okay. Deep green, that is here. This is here in deep green. In the case of the deep green, so what is happened in the case of deep green? These are places where plankton is there. That is phytoplankton is there. Plankton is what? It is a plant, water plant. If water plant is too much, then we call it is a eutrophic. This is not fit for drinking actually. And this will harm and the water body. It's like if you go to the lake or a pond, suppose you are in the park, you are traveling, you will see the color of the things. If you say deep green, you will find that this this given that these water body is eutrophic. And what is happened? If there is a lot of plant is there, they evaporate the water. So water body is losing water, and water losing losing one day they dry it. Then there is a color of brown. This brown color is that. Deep brown, dark brown is due to a industry is discharging some effluent, their wastewater, which has a color. And deep brown color is coming from the generally coming from the distillery industry. That distillery industry means the industry which keeps producing alcohol and others. So these are the color combinations. You can see what is the positions. Next is the odor. Odor means smell. There is no smell. And there is a septic. Water is spoiled. It is black and septic. No oxygen is there. You will find that smell of ammonia is coming. The smell of hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg smell is coming. And then burns you are also coming. If you are using, discharging too much detergent or soap, the water has a soapy odor, unpleasant odor. Then there is a good smell is coming, aromatic smell. That doesn't mean that is good for drinking. Aromatic smells come from a also a, a kind of a scent factory. They have this, uh, given your wastewater, uh, untreated wastewater from the factory is giving alcohol. There is a fishy mills. Fishy mills is can spoil mills. That is, some fish has been killed or some fishery is processing the fish. You will find that they are cutting the entire fish, washing, and this water is coming. It's a fishy smell. So best thing is that for drinking or bathing, there will be no smell. Now we have to measure pH. pH measurement is done by a strip. This is the strip you have seen this thing. And these strips, strips which are there, and these strips, if you are deep in the water, you will change the color. This paper is called the litmus paper. Now, blue litmus paper turns red. That is acidic. A red litmus paper turns blue. It is basic. But if, say, universal pH paper has no color, you put it in the water, you will find if you are a blue color, then your pH is coming too. So that is a kind of a acidic color. So this is the way the 
pH is measured by just a paper. That is a litmus paper. Universal pH paper you take and go for the, uh, it is purchased from the chemical shops and you use in the laboratory, you pick a beaker of water or glass of water, you put the color and you will find what color is coming. And right side there is a strips, which color it is match matching. Accordingly, you will tell it is acidic or alkali. This experiment you can do without much cost, without much effort, you can do. It is simple experiments. Now, there is some kind of a uh, liquid is there that is also sold. And you take one drop liquid to the glass of water and you will sign. And there is a kind of a color band is there. You can see the color and you will tell that whether it is acidic or alkali. Simple thing. You don't have to pay, pay, give a much money, much effort. Simple way you can go for the acid or alkali. You will decide. Acidic water will burn yourself. And alkali water will give you a lot of salts which you cannot drink. You cannot drink the water from the sea. Water, sea of the water has a lot of alkalinity. You always drink a fresh water. And fresh water is very limited in this world. So we cannot waste the fresh water also. <laughs> now, another thing is coming. That is your pH meter. It is an instrument, sophisticated instrument. This instrument, what you will do, you will do these things. There is an electrode. You see right side of the things. There is an electrode, and this electrode is here, right? And there is a meter. What is electrode? Electrode, there are two. One is cathode, one is anode. And once you put, cathode means cation, that is positive ions. Or anions means negative ion. Hydrogen ion is a positive ion. And hydrogen ion is a positive ion. And this hydrogen ion is a positive ion. So it is a it will go to anode. And they have a glass electrode that is anode. So once you put in the water, you will find that this is the this is the electrode, it is dipped in the water. And this electrode will measure how much hydrogen ion came to him. And when it is measured, it will go and see this instrument where the pH meter is there. Here is the meter is there. That is recorded. This is little sophisticated instrument. But our pH paper is a very simple instrument, quite accurate is it? Right. <laughs> then we have to measure this thermometer. <coughs> this thermometer, is wrapped up, you know, and this thermometer has a, here is the meter, United, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem. Ah, this I is the, see that our audience is pretty gripped. Ah, uh, this, this is, you see, this thermometer is in a box and because we are going to the river. I used to go to river, you know, when I was very uh, young, actually, at the age of 40s. Now I'm 70s. So 40s, I, when I used to go to the river, Ganga, Jamuna, etc., 30 to 40, I traveled a lot to see the measurement of the entire riverine system. We used to take this thermometer. And this thermometer dip, it, digital thermometer, immediately tell how much temperature is there. You have seen the thermometer in your, that thermometer is a small area from 95 to 100, uh, 110 degrees centigrade, that thermometer which we measure for our body's temperature. Mm -hmm. And that is in Fahrenheit scale. And here this temperature is 0 to 100 degrees centigrade. Quite a big range is there. So this thermometer, a science thermometer, you deep in the water, you will get the data. Then we have to go dissolve oxygen meter. 
dissolved oxygen also two electrodes are there. One electrode is a cathode and one is the electrode is anode. Now oxygen is a negatively charged. So it will go to positively charged cathode. And this cathode is a selective cathode. That means it has a membrane. Membrane obstruct all the things. Only the things will come is the oxygen. And this oxygen is measured. And once the oxygen measured, this is a O2 meter. It is also in, in pocket you can take and measure the measure. These are all very good instrument now came in the market. Maybe 10,000, 15,000 rupees. And the, this, I am telling this thing because I want that your school should have a kids and they can show you, which I am telling to you in future. So you, that can, generates the uh, curiosity more. Uh, I would have been happy to go there in your school and measuring the, all the things before you and tell you to measure. So it would have been the most interesting things. What is hanging? It's not coming. So this is the uh, three meters I have talked about. Thermometer, pH meter, and then it will have a talked about dissolved oxygen meter. Now we will go to a little bit more about the things. I am going to now conductivity meter. <laughs> Conductivity meter will tell you how much ions are there in the solids. Now, everybody, you have a water supply from the, uh, the Delhi Jal Board, or you are taking the groundwater. So, some of the schools in Noida once asked us. So, myself and another my colleague went there and they are taking the drinking water from the from the yeah, outside ground or groundwater. So inside the ground, there is water. They are pumping and they are giving to the children. They are telling that how safe it is. They are asking is there. So I went there and measuring the conductivity, the how much conductivity, what is the pH, what is the oxygen, what is the acidity. These are all I measured for the safety of the child. Now this conductivity meter, now you are taking the water. Have you seen in the kitchen? Have you gone to the kitchen? I think some girls has gone to the kitchen. You have gone. Darshi, you have gone. Very good. I am very good. You should go to the kitchen and see. Not to steal the chocolates and others, but from the fridge. <laughs> but also, also from, I used to do actually, that time we have no fridge. But my mother has a mid safe and I used to take it. That is good actually. So what is happened, you go there. You will find that one instrument is there. Water is coming from the pipe and that is to go through that instrument and then come to you. What is that instrument? That instrument called RO, reverse osmosis. What they are doing? They are removing excess, excess ions, excess solids they are dissolving so that you are not drinking too much solids. You are drinking the measurable solid. <laughs> How much this measurable solid is 500 milligram per liter. So code is telling that the, the RO should be limited and 200 milligram per liter. Because we have a discussion. If you're taking the all solids, then you have a shortage of these ions, calcium, magnesium, sodium. So they should, they should, we should have a, too much things are not good and too lace is also not good. So we have to optimize. So in between the two. So that is measured. And conductivity is measured. This RO fellow, when he's coming to your fire house, he will see that thing. That instrument he made, he put it and the calculation has done. Accordingly, they made the RO membranes. There is some hanging, and now I'm trying, there is trying. 
So we have now all the meters we have understood. pH meter, then your conductivity meter, then we have a dissolved oxygen meter, and we are also doing some sorts of. Now we will do some other things that how much parameter we have to measure to say that this water is fit for the good drinking or other things. Right, this is coming. So Central Pollution Control Board is an organization created by the Indian Parliament to define that what is the good water, what is the bad water, and what are the parameters should be there. So most important, they are telling pH, DO, conductivity, temperature. This is good for surface, surface water. In groundwater, dissolved oxygen and temperature is not so important. So odor, color, pH, DO, conductivity, temperature, you will get the general health of the water. Don't have to measure too much things. Simple <laughs> measure these, these parameters and you will know these things. Then there are some ions, that's ions behavior, whether it's a saline water or it's a hard water. Hard water, what is the water? You are shopping, you are cleaning with the soaps, and soaps is used and used, but cleaning is not there. That means there is a presence of hardness. This water, excess amount of calcium and magnesium is there. It is happening, I have seen some places, in Punjab, Fazilga, there is a hardness of hard water is there. Another water I have mentioned here is very important is the fluoride. If you if the fluoride is present in the water, the teeth become black. Right? Teeth become black. And after that, your bones become weak. That is the most dangerous things. So what we have done, Central Groundwater Board and Central Pollution Control Board, they measures. And they have identified some pockets in India where fluoride is there, excess fluoride is there. So they remove that excess fluoride by chemicals means. And then asking the villagers to take the water. <coughs> now, in case of, if you are no fluoride, then also there is a problem in teeth. So some of the toothpaste company also giving a little bit fluoride in their toothpaste. Right? That is, you have observed it. Then there are some parameters for fish. Is ammonia is there. Fish cannot survive. It will die. Then there is a parameter called coliform. Coliform is a bacteria. It is coming from our stomachs. It's a rod-shaped bacteria, and we call it as a pathogens. From us, it has been created. This bacteria, if it's too much in the water, then there will be chance of cholera, typhoid, this kind of disease. So this bacteria is killed by chlorine. So when you see that, if you go to the water works, that where water is produced for drinking, they pump the water from river, the first do the settle the solids, then they go and aid it, give the oxygens, then filter through the things, filter through the sand, it is a sand filter, and then they do a little bit chlorine. So chlorine has killed the pathogens. This is the way the water treatment plant is there, and they save yourself. Organic matter is coming. <laughs> Suppose we are sitting in the morning and defecate. Where our stools goes? We flush it. Where it goes? We defecate, flush it. Where it goes? It goes to the river. But what has happened in the between? These has been collected through sewer lines. And sewer lines and treat the sewage. And this is amount of sewage and amounts of waste, organic waste is coming. We measured in the terms of BOD. What is happened? Why you call this BOD? 
because these sewage is goes to the river a river has some bacteria they want to eat it they eat it and then they take the oxygens to transfer the glucose and fructose which is there they convert it to carbon dioxide why because they get a heat why you take the food because you are chewing etc some nutrients is helpful and this is burning because you take breath in the air oxygen enters in your body and oxygen burned it and burned it carbon dioxide go out so you take oxygen give the carbon dioxide and tree take the carbon dioxide makes food for them and give oxygen to us so if you stay you must have some plants within you so you are exchanging your carbon dioxide plant is taking and plant is giving you the oxygen so that's why we always tell ped bachao mm -hmm. uh, that the slogan we are giving now they don't cut the tree they are friends of you and many body is friends of you he will know slowly and in our factory waste or in our waste water from our sewage from our domestic sources from kitchen from toilet the waste water is going they contains bod nitrogen and phosphate and carbon nitrogen and phosphate this makes the unit of the cell dna etc they are making so these are nutrients but these are excess they make the life in the river or water body that is called eutrophication trophication means enrichment and eutrophication has been enrichment with the nutrients right that is the eutrophications and there are some toxic metal is coming say in the place of a part of west bengal part of bihar bangladesh there is a arsenic one metal is there it is there because of the natural uh, uh, systems this has come and if arsenic is there arsenosis one disease is coming in the skins there is a problems so these are the things heavy metals are like uh, too much iron manganese chromium cadmium some of the metals are also carcinogen carcinogen means which causes cancer so this toxicity is there some pesticides we are using that is also toxic toxics <laughs> so i have told you color you can so visually odor you can see manual that means you have to see that thing and get the smell temperature thermometer ph meter conductivity meter electrical conductivity do meter and turbidity turbidity is another parameter which is measured how much suspended solid is there right how much suspended solids are there in the water if you take a too much suspended solids in the water it will slowly enter in the tract and find it in the lungs and other places so that's why suspended solid has to be removed that is man by nephelometer so total dissolved solid and this gravi gravimetry is there there is some kind of a ions or chemicals which can make by the colorimeter that means they if you give the reagent some chemicals they make a color and the color is measured in a colorimeter i will discuss it in details of the colorimeters later so these are the things this is the methodology <laughs> and now the question millions and millions of water flowing in the river and you are taking small water and then analyze from where you take the water from the river that was the question so government of india has notified and advice of central pollution control board we should measure in the baseline from where the water is river is originated see ganga we are taking the baseline uh, in rudrapayak where alakananda and mandakini is meeting then devi prayag 
where the Bhagirathi is beating. That is our baseline station. Then Ganga is flowing. And when it is flowing, a lot of water bodies are coming. Jamuna is mixing where? Elavad. So there are so many. Ram, Ganga is mixing and Kanpur. So much water bodies are coming. Natural water bodies. Then in Bihar, Gandak, Son, all river is missing, meeting there. Then it goes to Faraka and turn in two, two, divided in two part. One has gone to Bangladesh, one had gone to Calcutta and down it is going to Bay of Bengal, discharge. When the other streams are mixing, this is called the tributaries. That is river is taking other rivers, they are mixing here and mixing to the mainstream. So we take a sample there, that is called flux sample. Not only the good water body is mixing, there is a sewage drain is mixing, municipal waste. If you see, if you start walking around Yamuna and you will find 17 drains are mixing. These drains are carrying our excreta and that is the flux dish, flux mixing. That is also we measured. And they are, when they are mixing, after mixing, what is the impact of the water? So we have go for an impact station. So this is the, this is the, do you see that here is the dynamism? Here is the flux baseline and impact station. Then there is a station, last station, where river meets the ocean. That in called global flux. Why it is global flux? In that ocean, so many rivers of so many countries are mixing. So that is called global flux. And its impact in the coastal area is also measured. So all we measured, how much water, fresh water is coming from Gangotri and etc., Yamunotri and Gangotri, how much it has been polluted due to tributaries and flux, and what is their impact, and then slowly this wastewater, this water bodies is discharging to the ocean, how much pollutant they are discharging to the ocean. These are the way we measure riverine systems, right? That is our job actually. See how the measurement is taking place. This gentleman, he is there. He is taking the water. What he is taking? He has a bottle. And bottle, he drinks it. Drinks it means he takes the water first and then wash it with the water three, four times and then take the water in opposite direction. If river is flowing this way, the fellow will take the water in opposite direction. And this the water is filled up, then they are making a level, and this level, and they put it in an ice box and take it to the laboratory. Before that, here, they made pH, they made color, they see the color, they made the conductivity, the temperature, all in situ. In situ means within the river they measured. And some of the parameters they have taken to laboratory to measure. This is the, our sampling program, right? So painstaking program. If you say 2,650 kilometer river, you are going after 10 kilometer, you are taking the samples. Then this stretch is taking another one, one to 1.5 months. So these are this is the things. I have given the guidelines how it has done. I have talked to you. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt you. I just want to let you know that uh, we have 10 more minutes. Or maybe ah, yeah, I will manage it 10 more minutes. So sample code number. You have to, when you are making the level, sample code number. Code number means longitude, latitude of that place, the location of the place. Date and timing of the sample, where when you take the sample and what time, and source of type of samples. Type of samples means you are taking one graph, whether you have taken any pretreatment of the samples, 
or any special notes. There is a rainfall for the last days. There is sunny days. This you have to name. And then who has taken the sample? Sampler's name has to be taken. This is in a nutshell about our water quality parameters. Now you are all, including me, suffering from air pollution in the winter in Delhi, right? So what is the major pollutant is this? What is the particle matter? Particles, small, small particles are in the air. And when mixing up, you will find the very gray color of the air, very gloomy and gray color. And this is entering in your, through your nose, and smaller the particle, they directly go to the lungs and create a respiratory problems. Uh, this is a asthma also is coming. This is a problem for the children, actually. I understand this. If there is a sulfur dioxide is there, it is coming from transport industry or burning anything. Burning carbon, burning fuel, it has also giving sulfur dioxide. And NOx is coming from the vehicles. There is also one water is coming, one pollutant is coming, that is carbon monoxide. It is absolutely coming from transport. And we it, it's a carboxy, carboxy beta, uh, uh, carboxy beta globin, neoglobin. That means this is creating oxygen deficiency of the of the blood. And people cannot survive for a long time if carbon monoxide is very high. And then benzene is a carcinogenic. Now, benzene is a percentage stays in the petrol and diesel. Now, persuasion of the government and ministry, all the oil companies is eliminating benzene from the oil. As much as possible, it is eliminating now. So as a result, benzene problem is lesser and lesser now. But this PM 2.5 and particulate matter, it is too much actually in Delhi, right? <laughs> I would have been happy to say that air pollution, one day it's necessary because it is necessary. Now you inhale the air. If you inhale the air into nose and through mouth, and then it is entered in a track. That is the track in the case of the and then coming to lungs. Huh? And then when it's come to the lungs, it lungs is a gas exchange region, it is deposited. And lungs get damaged actually. And oxygen intake capacity of the lungs is going down. That is the problem with the PM 2.5 and PM 10. Smaller the particle, dangerous the particle. 10 PM 10 PM 2.5 PM 2.5 is one tenth of your hair. Itni patli hai. Aapko jo hair just take it out. You put it in and you catch the PM 2.5 from the hair and see that one tenth of the thickness of this hair. So small particles are entering in your body. So I advise you in the winter when you are going out, you take a small mask and then come to the spoon taken out and then then so on the transport on the bus or a standing due to bus so early morning the deposition is more so you can be safer right small mask which is happening in the covid time we are using small mask is sufficient so location where i will take the sample, what parameter I should do, date, time, how sampling location, the duration. One hour will take the sample, eight hour will take the sample, or continuous. In Delhi, we have a two type of station. One is taking by 24 hour sample, and one is telling one hour and eight hours also. That is continuous. We have a uh, meta, continuous real-time measurement system in Delhi is there. And you will find that air quality index, we, can, we tell and tell this is the average character of Delhi, AQY. So, so I am taking you now 
how these things are happening. So you have a thermal power station where you are carbon, you are burning. And this is, air is the carry. If velocity of air is very high, it will go away. But in the winter, velocity is very, very low. You will see in the winter morning, patta hiltani tree mein. It is not moving. You don't need to measure. Then you will find that bonding is a dangerous bonding. Right? That is a bonding where it is dangerous. Because it is the pollution you generated, you did not carry away. It will come to you as a receptor. And in summer, there is a velocity is high. It takes away. And winter, another thing, hot, land is cool and hot air is coming back. But in the summer, land is hot, so the hot air is going up. So it is going up, it is going faster, so you have no problem. In the rainy season, they wash away. There is no problem, but in winter it is a problem. Particularly November first week, November first and second week, then there is some air movement is there. And this time, which we have just crossed, January, middle, their system is really wrong, actually. So how we will measure? Is it faster or good? And what direction it is going? We have a, a measure means fan is there, right? <clears throat> wind, it, this is moving. This wind direction is giving like this. So east to west, it is going. And the source is middle. The affected area is there. You see that thing, how, how nicely it has been drawn. Based on the wind direction, the receptor in the downwind direction is identified. And this is, is there everywhere. Wherever the airport, a pilot is seeing that pilot has a fan, fan system, panel systems, they're seeing that. Accordingly, he choose the direction where the plane will go down. So every, you will find Sabdajang Airport, Palam Airport, Indira Gandhi Airport, they are giving the data from there. Delhi the main data is there. Now Delhi has a lot of, lot, lot of places. But generally, air, aerodrome has a, they must have a systems of air direction, velocity, and etc. <laughs> Now you have to, so not only direction of the air, you have to selection where you will get maximum ground level concentration. That has you have to measure. So we can measure it for mathematically that how much it is coming. And impact, the source's impact for, for the pupils. Generally, the station must be where the population density high because they have to save us. No? That is one thing. And for a wrong time, we can measure. Generally, we take the measurement is close to a police station because uh, if you keep it, we have a very bad habit. Some, some people have taken out this uh, measurement instrument. So we have now gone for the near to the police station or uh, Mother Dairy, uh, this comment. Uh, building we have taken that in. You can create a station in your so now from here one is the baseline and here the red spots it is a source. Now the three is the maximum concentration. And the four, it is least affected. And two, 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 two stations are there. These two stations are from the affected, but not so affected. And four is least affected. So this is the way we design the air quality monitoring where the instrument I should keep. Now, Delhi is a typical place where Winter, 
the air is coming from Punjab areas, Kashmir areas, and summer it is from coming from Rajasthan. So change of pattern is there. So we make a grid. So you see, small small stations are there. These are all grid, and in the grid, every grid we have a station. The big metropoli like Mumbai, Delhi, Pune. Bangalore, Chennai, Calcutta, these are the places we have a great systems. This is the things. Now, how this air is monitoring? Look, here it is coming, right? This air is entering and then coming out. Here is a filter. Here we have given a filter. And filter is weight, weighted filter. And after 24 hours or eight hours, we take out the filter and weighing it. Difference between the thing is the particulate matter. And then this is called particulate matter. In case of PM 2.5 sampler, in case of PM 2.5 meter, we make a, a, a barrier where only PM 2.5 can enter. And it is entered like this, here again the filter, and then your air is going and particulate, you take it, and this is the instrument, right? This is the way it has been measured. Then we have to measure by SOX methods where we are giving a solvent here. So air is entering in the solvent and then, and we take it one liter per milliliter, may I read, this is the transfer of the samples. Sample of Leglia, then we add the sample sulfuric acid and some chemicals, formaldehyde, etc. And there is a color came. And this color we have taken to the colorimeter. And colorimeter is how this air light is entering. And if the concentration is very high, so some light is absorbed. And the emergent light we measure. How much it is absorbed is the concentration. So that is we are measuring like this. Concentration excesses, if concentration is high, absorbance is also high. This is the way we measure it. We see the some samples are here and there, and mean line graph we take and measure these things. Now it, you don't have to do these things. Now instrument is doing. Com instrument company is giving the digital one. So this is the way we have done it. So now I have a small colorimetric principles. I am showing you the colorimetric principles. The madam will show it, and you will find that is how instrument works. Color measuring. Can you contact him, no? Anubhuti, you're on mute. Uh, I'm mute. Thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, Basuji, we've crossed three o'clock, so if you can just wrap it in a few uh, minutes. Okay, okay, then, then don't show the measurement technique. Now you ask me some questions. Oh. So, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Basu, for giving us such an insightful and informative session. I must tell you that the session has been a big hit. I have got so many requests from our audience asking for the PPT. They have all enjoyed it. I could see many of them taking notes, writing meticulously about the different things that you were speaking about. In fact, I would also like to ask our audience um, how they found the session, and I will now open the floor uh, for the Q and A session. So, uh, if any of you has a question for Dr. Basu, please raise your hands uh, using the reactions button on uh, the Zoom, and I will come to you immediately. Um, I could see a couple of you had some queries. Any questions? Uh, Natasha Amelia, 
Natasha, I could see you writing very meticulous notes. Uh, tell us, how did you find the session? Did you like it? We can't hear you. Yeah. Yes. Natasha, which class are you in? I'm in class three. Oh my God. Okay. Did you like it? Did you enjoy yes, it? Are you inspired to take up science and become a scientist? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's lovely. Who all would like to study more of science and would like to become a scientist now? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's lovely to see so many hands being raised. It's lovely to see how you have inspired uh, so many kids, Basuji, today. Um, Zeb, uh, it's wonderful to see you once again in our Young Environmentalist session. Thank you so much for coming back. Uh, tell us what your question is. What, what are your comments on the session today? Did you what did you what did you like best about uh, uh, Dr. Basu's uh, presentation? Now, now, yeah. Can you be a little louder? Oh, your connection, I think, is getting disrupted. Um, okay, I'll come back to you maybe in a while. Uh, Adrija, how did you find the session today? Did you like it? What did you like best about our PPT? I like it too much. What you did like you like it? about it? Yes, ma'am. What did you like about it? Um, I like the whole thing that they say. <laughs> okay. Uh, Where are you from, Adrija? Our part we have here. Where are you from? I think we have lost the connection. Um, I'll take a few more closing comments. Uh, let me tell you, Dr. Basu, we have got almost nine to 10 requests from our audience who uh, wanted to have the PPT. Yes, and, please. Yes. And we would be glad to share it with all of you. Uh, you just need to send me your email ID on chat and uh, I would immediately send it to you. Um, Devan Chatterjee, uh, hi, how are you doing? Did you like our, what did you like our, what did you like about our session today? Uh, everything. <laughs> You'll have to name something. The pollution thing. The pollution thing. Okay. This is still very broad, but thank you so much. Where are you from, Dev, Devan Vese? I am from uh, Bengal. Mm. Bengal. Which part of Bengal? Our Dr. Basu is also from Bengal. Uh, West Bengal. <laughs> from Durgapur. From Durgapur. Okay. Uh, that's, that's lovely. Thank you so much for coming in. I'll take a few more closing comments before we close in. I think, uh, meanwhile, if any of you wants to ask a question to Dr. Basu, he's available. Uh, please send, please raise your hand and I'll just take you to him and uh, he can answer the questions for you. Um, so, Mariam and Aisha, um, I see both of you very active in our session since the beginning. Uh, where are you from? And are you people, are you guys sisters or are you classmates? Tell us a little about yourself. Ma'am, we both are sisters. Okay, and where are you from? We are from New Delhi. You're from New Delhi. Okay, did you understand the session today? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Uh, what, what did you like about it? Uh, what, what, what new did you learn today? About uh, pollution. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. But I think that a lot of them were listening to you, Dr. Basu, really attentively. Dr. Saheed Hassan, he wants to talk with me, I think. Yeah, okay. Let me connect you to him. Yes, Dr. Saheed, please... Uh, uh, go on and ask your question or comments uh, uh, 
right now. Uh, so you need to unmute. Okay. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, 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 good afternoon, Dr. Prasu. I am from Gandhi Nagar. Uh, so I am working as a scientist with G in the Energy Research and Management Institute established by the government of Gujarat. Very good, uh, sir. Though I have worked a lot on groundwater resource management as well. Uh, for these uh, young children, I have a, one message from your side that we must have a mitigation session. We, we understand the quality of water, we understand the quality of air, whether we analyze by ourselves or we collect the data from some, some other sources. We must need to, have, uh, to understand what are the mitigation mechanism. Very nice of you. Very nice of you. Yeah, to get it off, uh, whether our water is pure, the water what we are getting through the bottling plants, whether it is fit for the purpose or not. Most of the where places you will find at, as on today, the people are selling water in the name of fresh water or uh, ah. purified water or filter water. But I, as a scientist, I understand that these water quality sometimes or most of the time they don't match with the quality standard set right. by for, for our drinking purpose. Right. Yeah, I am glad that you have, you have. I am glad that you have uh, attended my lecture. It's a very difficult to tell six years kids to the subject. So I was trying my best to come down as much they are level. Very And I feel I am the youngest one in the in the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, you're not. Uh, Dr. Basu is even younger than you. So. Uh, <laughs> no, very, good. Uh, yeah. very good, very good. Thank you, sir. All, all of you, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, credit goes to the organizer that's gathering ah, such type of students from different after corners. Me. She is thank after you. me. Thank you so much, Dr. Sayed. Thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, I thanks a lot. It's wonderful to have you and I hope uh, our masterclass sessions become more popular uh, among your kids and uh, your students. And uh, meanwhile, I would thank everybody for coming in, registering in, joining in and taking interest in this topic today. Thank you so much for remain atten remaining attentive. And I will be emailing all of you, the PPT, whosoever wants to take a look. And yeah, let me tell you before we close our session, let me tell you about our Gober Times magazine. We have a special magazine for kids uh, which raises awareness on environmental issues. I hope you have taken a look at it. In fact, our current edition is on millets. So um, as you, uh, uh, I mean, so uh, to give you some food for thought, please go through our magazine. It's freely available on our website. Read it, enjoy it, and share it among your friends and colleagues. Uh, I once again thank you for visiting us. Uh, please do keep checking out our magazine and our website regularly. And we will see you next month with yet another exciting activity. Thank you once again. And you can now say your bye-byes and uh, thank yous to Dr. Basu. Uh, will... Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to Dr. Basu. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. We will unmute everybody now. And thanks to these young children for patiently listening to you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's <laughs> encouragement. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Bye bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, ma'am.